Hello, my name is Andy Whedon and I'm the Managing Director of Deutsche Telekom Global Business Solutions from the UK. I'm here today to talk with Asahi Europe and International um, about um, a large digital transformation project that we worked with them on starting last year and continue to do that. You should know Asahi from being one of the largest brewery organisations in the world with famous brands such as Pilsner Urkel from the Czech Republic, Grolsch from the Netherlands and Peroni from Italy and of course the super brand which is Asahi. Today I am joined by Reto who is the group CIO for the organisation and we're going to talk about the decisions that they've taken on their digital transformation journey and why they chose Deutsche Telekom Global Business Solutions for the partner for that journey. Reto, great to have you here today. The pleasure is mine Andy, thanks a lot for having me. You've selected us to roll out a global SD-WAN for your organization across 200 sites. I need to ask you the question, what was it about SD-WAN and the growth and resilience that made you reevaluate your IT and decide on that platform? Yeah, very good question, Andy. So, so you know, this is part of a bigger transformation effort. So, so we are digitally transforming this company end to end from from an infrastructure perspective, network, cloud, hosting, etc. So, so the SD WAN technology, this is one integral piece to enable our move to the cloud and to become a cloud native company. That's the reason that this SD WAN transformation is so incredibly important uh, for, for, for our overall digitalization journey. If you're okay, can we just look at more of the digital transformation side of the, the, um, the journey? and organizations like yourselves are spending more time deciding on their partner community, both from a technology and a service delivery perspective. Can you just add in some context as to why you chose Deutsche Telekom Global Business Solutions for that part of your journey? So Andy, we really do believe uh, in nurturing partner ecosystems. And there is two main reasons for that. So number one, we want to have the best of the best for doing the job. And undisputedly, Deutsche Telekom is of the best of the best to run networks. Number two is because of innovation. Because we want to have continuous innovation brought into the process and into service delivery. And here again, I think as a carrier, uh, you're set up uh, very, very well to bring the innovation that we are expecting from our ecosystem partner uh, into, into the operation of our network and the transformation of our network. So, Reto, if I can, just picking up on the partner ecosystem um, element of that answer. Um, obviously, you chose Deutsche Telekom because we're delivering you an outcome and we're basing it on um, our partner technology, which is VMware. SD-WAN or Velo Cloud, as we've previously known. But what is it about that that you liked and what helped you make the decision for that technology? Yeah, good question, Andy. Uh, while we are buying an end-to-end -end managed service from Deutsche Telekom, I think the VMware capability is absolutely key, is critical in order to really give us the flexibility and the visibility into our network. So that's why that partnership between Deutsche Telekom and VMware uh, is very, very critical for us. That's a uh, really good insight, Reto, and thanks. It's really good food for thought for, I'm sure, any audience watching this today. Um, what they may not know is that um, we've been a provider to you for your network for a long, long time before, but with digital transformation changing the landscape for everyone, do you think that's creating the need for a new type of partner to deliver your network services? Yes, indeed, Andy. Deutsche Telekom GBS or Deutsche Telekom was our supplier for network. But I'm explicitly saying supplier because now it's a partner. It's an ecosystem partner. And from an ecosystem partner, as we, as we just said before, we are expecting innovation. And I think that's where you were really uh, leading, leading the way because you realized that companies are not doing MPLS anymore, that companies are moving more and more to internet-based networks. And that's, uh, that was absolutely an asset that you, you brought into that ecosystem partnership. So Reto, I want to move to another really important topic, which is sustainability. And you know that's something that's quite close to our heart as well. So for example, we've got um, 
uh, a net zero target of 2040. Um, but before that, we've got internal and external emissions in the organisation to be eradicated by 2025. So can I ask you the question, how important was this, this project around network transformation as part of your uh, decarbonisation strategy? So the short answer is it was super, super important because we have some very, very aggressive targets to be uh, net zero by 2030. So having said that, the strategies of our both companies are very, very complementary and, and we have the same targets at the high level in mind. And that's why we also embedded those targets into our contractual framework. Okay, one other really hot topic is the concept of business agility. Um, and I'm sure in an organization like yourselves and where you compete in the global market, it's an incredibly important thing for you to be doing. So. Can you help add some context as to how um, that is so important to your network project? And what were the risks to you not undertaking that transformation journey? Yeah, you see, Andy, the, the, the risk would have been the, the move to the cloud. So we couldn't have moved to the cloud because MPLS doesn't really enable you know, the full capabilities of the cloud. That's number one. With that also comes the flexibility uh, that we need accessibility to data anywhere, every uh, at any time, etc. Right, and then the third uh, element is cost. Uh, MPLS is very, very costly uh, and inflexible, so so therefore um, SD1 is bringing us the perfect uh, capabilities that we require for our transformation. So Reto, that that's really impressive, and those credentials from you alone as an organisation are, are sensational. So um, I think it's fantastic what you're achieving here in terms of your uh, decarbonisation strategy. And, and you know, it's really, really energising me. I mean, it's energising me that we as a company have such a tough target and really leading the way. You know, just recently I read an article and there was the CO2 emissions produced or, or caused by data centers are equal to the CO2 emissions from global airlines. So, so I really had a bit of a wake-up moment. So Reto, if you'll allow me just to sort of summarize what our conversation has been today. So firstly, um, what I think we've agreed is that, you know, selecting a network and a new network is not a nice to have. It's a really critical part of any organization's future digital strategy. Indeed. And you've also said that the important part for you was finding a partner that would be, become part of your ecosystem um, and fit into making sure that we deliver against your, your agenda. Um, and I think it's important because you've got to find a partner that you can trust, a partner that can do the planning and execute well on the plan uh, because that's the only way you're going to achieve your, your outcomes. You see, the big, big question that you have to answer as a CIO, I think, is do you go for a carrier or do you go for an integrator, right? And there is pros and cons. I think the pro definitely is when you go with a carrier that you have innovation at the max. And, you know, that was a, was a very, very strong argument for us. Great. And again, if I can summarize for the benefit of the audience, that the, the outcomes for you were things like agility, um, obviously having a partner that you can trust to do the job, um, that agility giving you competitive advantage and one area we focused on as well was around your uh, decarbonisation strategy and really making that part of the overall outcome. Indeed, absolutely. Uh, and then what, what also uh, played an important role is obviously the, the enablement of that cloud strategy and last but not least cost. Right. So, Reto, it just leaves me to say thank you very much for your time today. Thank you very much, Brilliant Andy. Brilliant to interview. Thank, thank you. you. And I want to say thank you to our audience today for joining us. Um, hopefully you catch us again soon. I hope it's been useful. Mm -hmm.